Fantastic. You, uh, yeah. Han Chen Fang. One. Yeah, two, hello. Two, Hi. And live. Um, hello, um, everybody. This is, um, again, uh, Siegel Talks. Uh, my name is Frank Henschka. I'm the executive director of the Siegel Center here at the Graduate Center of CUNY in New York City, in New York City, which is a ghost town. Uh, uh, <laughs> everything is closed. Theaters are closed. Uh, clubs are closed. Uh, restaurants, um, like uh, so uh, many places around the world. And um, we uh, decided to create the Siegel Talks. So we know... Um, what, what questions these situation poses for artists and uh, how can we create meaning um, uh, in this time? And also, you know, what can, can artists do to create a, a, a meaning? And we need, as always, to um, listen to them. I think we also need to find a space um, to really think uh, what is happening and to process as we are so overwhelmed um, with everything. We had our start yesterday um, of the, our talks, the great Taylor Mack and Kristen, Kristen Martin from the HERE Art Center in New York. I talked about their new initiative, which is that brilliant idea of Taylor to have a kind of a Netflix for, uh, for your performing artists. So people pay $10 as subscriber based support artists who will be commissioned to do work. And uh, people can go then online and see up to 50 um, 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 different uh, artists creating something. Um, uh, we said yesterday already, uh, Brecht said we all need new theater for a new times we live in. And he did theater for the children of the technological age. We entered the digital age. It's advancing and uh, it poses um, so, so many questions. And um, we heard about uh, the situation in New York, people out of jobs, what they do, how they survive, how they are. And now we have the great uh, opportunity to hear from um, uh, Hong Kong and uh, China um, on mm. um, the situation there, the Siegel Center is a global center. We bridge academia and professional theater, but always international and American theater. And we have done that for over 10, 15 years. And uh, now we have with us here, uh, Shu Yi Liao, a choreographer uh, from Beijing. We have uh, Han Chen Feng right. from Beijing and uh, Mark uh, Xiu Yuhaz uh, from uh, Hong Kong, who has been an activist for a very, very long time. Um, um, so welcome everybody. Thank you. Hi, hello. Hi, can you all, you can all hear us. And um, maybe let's uh, start uh, um, um, with the situation um, in China. Um, um, Han Chan, um, maybe give us a little, uh, um, little uh, account of the atmosphere, what's happening in, in, in China and the performing arts and in the theater scene. Well, actually, uh... Things are eventually getting better in, in mainland now. You know, schools are going to reopen and the people are returning to their jobs bit by bit. Uh, Beijing here, on the other hand, is slower than other provinces because this is the capital and the strategy here is more rigid and conservative. But speaking of performing arts, actually it's still, you know, nothing here. Nothing in, in mainland, nothing, nothing in Beijing, of course. And it's not a, not a good thing. You know, uh, for theater people, it's not just a, a pose. I heard someone said, you know, the, the, the pose button has been pressed, but it's not just a pose. It's a totally shut down, you know, because uh, theater people in Beijing, there are uh, a lot of them are just independent artists. So uh, if situation go wrong, they're really going to, you know, uh, experience this severe phenomenon. So uh, it's not a good time. And uh, the national theaters, on the other hand, they're, they're, they're quite okay, but still they're losing money now because they cannot open to the public. So uh, uh, after all, people are trying to uh, ask for help from the government. Uh, they're hoping the government will reduce some taxes, provide some, uh, Stephens, right now we don't know what would happen. And still, I'm not sure how many theaters are there in Beijing, but I think approximately there are 300,000 seats in Beijing, and they're all empty now. Uh, and the theater will not reopen until May. That doesn't mean we will reopen the theater by May. That means we will have to uh, make another evaluation by May. So uh, my guess is, you know, the theater will keep closed uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, we got a, um, a, a question from a listener. We, by the way, have our um, 
the email you can write to with questions at Siegel Talks, talks with S at the end at gmail.com. And Yun Tian said, how do people in China engage in a theater during this plague? Um, what do they do? How, how do they engage with the world? Do you well, hear you something? Say, yeah, if, uh, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I have to, uh, if you want to say engage into theater, actually, you cannot engage into a real theater because the theaters are all closed. But you, of course, you can engage into our real life. You know, uh, uh, you just said, you know, this is a digital era and the whole world is changing and the theater is changing as well. You know, we, we, uh, we have this, this famous cell phone application called TikTok. I think that's also quite famous in, uh, mm -hmm. in America or somewhere. And uh, people are do, uh, shooting short videos, short dramas and upload it, you know, to kill time and kill pressure, which is precisely what we need uh, during this plague. And uh, yeah, I think I think the the whole situation is more immersive now. You know, the whole world is a theater. You know, every day uh, you wake up in the morning and you switch on your cell phone, and a lot of news has popped up. And mm -hmm. it looks like they're trying to throw a drama right in front of your face and tell you, okay, this is the drama for today. React, and people will do this. You know, maybe maybe online talk, maybe 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 even fight. You know, fight a war that doesn't exist. And this mm. is the way they how to uh, uh, they they engage into the the drama show here today. Mm. Um, I think we seem to have lost uh, Shu Yi Liao. Uh, maybe she will be back soon. But of course, we have with us a uh, Mark uh, Shi Yu Yu Haz, who is a director, Hi. artist, a festival organizer for many years, over decades, um, a staple of the theater scene in Hong Kong. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Mark, give us a little um, atmosphere. What's happening in Hong Kong? Well, uh, the situation is getting more serious, actually. Um, now, you know, just several days ago, you know, people like 60 or 70,000 uh, people came back to Hong Kong from uh, England, Europe, and the United States, for example. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, the uh, number of positive, you know, COVID-19 cases, you know, uh, have jumped. Uh, actually, uh, today it's around about seven, 700. And, uh, and this is stretching, you know, our medical facilities. And that, you know, there are people who found they are positive, you know, in the test. They had to stay home for two or three days before they were actually admitted to hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we haven't closed down everything. Actually, all, a lot of restaurants are still open, uh, except that uh, over the weekend, the government has decided, you know, that uh, people should not gather together in four, more mm -hmm. than four, actually. Yeah. Uh, you can, four of you, you know, can go to a restaurant. And yeah. then, you know, uh, the tables had to be 1.5 meters, you know, yeah. uh, separated. Yeah, yeah. Um, couples are separated. But how is the performing arts scene? Is there, what's happening with the performers, the actors, directors, playwrights? What do you hear? Yeah. What, how, how do you stay in contact? And what's... Well, what's uh, actually, there are still people rehearsing. And uh, there are people who are thinking yet yeah, that may uh, can be okay for performances. Uh, right now, of course, the government once again closed down all, all its theater and its sports playground, uh, recreation centers and so on. And all the cinemas are to be closed or have been closed. Um, so theater people, you know, they, uh, well, all the uh, international uh, tours and exchanges had to be stopped, you know. Uh, we canceled, for example, our Hong Kong Arts Festival. And, and we ourselves, you know, had to cancel uh, a tour uh, made up of uh, some tw 12 young people, young in the late 20s and early 30s, you know. Last September, they actually gathered together in northern France and they devised a play called uh, The Spice Road. 
and which was to um, actually this this guys are to were to reassemble at the mm-hmm. middle of March in Nepal to rehearse again and then make their South Asian tour different cities and then came and then they would come to uh, Taiwan Hong Kong and Macau but the you know our French director he arrived you know uh, on about 14th of March and uh, he discovered then actually that our uh, actors you know even from India were not to were, were not able to go into uh, Nepal and then people from uh, other place, father father places you know like from Uganda, from, from, from Egypt, from uh, uh, Peru, you know, they were going to go to Kathmandu and they would get visa on landing, but this was not possible anymore. Not possible anymore. So, uh, uh-huh. Tell us a bit um, about the theater groups. To, to uh, we had to defer the tour. Now, hopefully, you know, from, from January to March 2021. A year from now. Tell us a bit about what company is rehearsing and what play are they doing? Do you know the artists who are rehearsing and how does that work? They have a rehearsing studio and they can stay together in a larger group? Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they stay to, uh, yeah, they, they can work, you know. Uh, our offices are open, uh, our workplaces, you know, are open for work. And uh, even if there are more than four people, uh, you are not liable to be prosecuted. But mm-hmm. uh, one thing very interesting actually is that uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, which runs uh, a department of cultural management, uh, they were to stage uh, along the edge festival. And then they decided, you know, because of this event, uh, it now has become a digital festival, uh, which is going to happen late April and then uh, until early May. Good, send us uh, the link. We can post it on our website and on uh, how well, sure. yeah, they, mm-hmm. they They would be very interested in, yeah. in having people from the US, you know, to watch, yeah. Yeah, I think we are all in this together and uh, there is, we share in a way our, um, also the loneliness and also, uh, which is out there now and the um, kind of uh, feeling of of fellow mankind, so. One of the groups that I'm involved in is the cinematic, you know, theater company. They actually were looking forward, you know, to go to California or San Francisco to join the, San Francisco International mm. Arts Festival. But now, yeah. of course, it's <clears throat> canceled and in, mm, it impossible. Will be canceled. Again, yeah, this a... group, you know, is rehearsing a play. Uh, and it depends on the situation. Uh, because they are going to perform in this theater, uh, which is not run by the government. So it still is in operation. So um, in t- two or three weeks time, you know, when they actually stage this uh, uh, play, they, they actually, you know, uh, would be selling tickets, you know, to those who were brave enough uh, to come to the theater wearing a mask uh, and then, you know, Sitting uh, distance having safe their, distance, their temperature yeah. matched and at the same time, you know, uh, having a hand wash. Uh, but at the same time, again, you know, they, they try to engage professional uh, people to live beam, uh, to, to, what's the word, live stream. Stream. Mm-hmm. Live stream, yeah. To live people. stream. Yeah. Uh, and what they do is that, you know, they manage to find a platform through which, you know, people can pay to see, uh, to see that. Yeah. the live stream. Uh, you have a choice of either risking yourself at the theater, paying two hundred dollars Hong Kong, uh, or paying eighty dollars for the live stream show. Live stream show, great. Yeah, and also have a look at you know that what Taylor Mac and Kirsten Martin in New York created. Uh, Taylor Mac mostly 
It's on um, tricklelabnyc.org, that um, kind of Netflix model based. And I'm sure they would be interested to have views from Hong Kong. And, and maybe they also can uh, look up um, um, for your site. So I hope that this will be a good yeah. enough distance between the spectators and it's safe. Um, we ha all have to uh, acknowledge uh, realities. But let's ask uh, Shu Yi Liao. Uh, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. And maybe speak a tiny bit louder um, or the bones up. And so um, from you, from as a personal, you're a young choreographer. You are based in Beijing? Yes, I'm based in Beijing. And, um, and uh, so tell us a bit, what is the uh, situation? If you have earphones, it's easier to put it on or speak a bit louder so we hear you. Um, uh, can, can you hear me now? As yeah, well? that's better. Mm -hmm. uh, so my situation is like, uh, like cause I'm a freelancer yeah. and many project uh, has been canceled or uh, postponed, rescheduled. So um, in this specific uh, period of time, me personally, I, I, I already stay at, oh, at home for two months. So, two months? Yeah, almost two months, I think. And many of my theater friends uh, have similar life as me. It's like uh, we live with the family or individually and maybe do some uh, individual practice. Um, so what do you mean so individual for, practice? You dance or yeah, you for rehearse? Me, for example, yeah, for me, for example, I focus more uh, as my body as the only medium now available for me. Um, mm -hmm. So I observe myself, my movement, uh, my daily life more. And I do some uh, solo practice every day. So every day I have my uh, small topic, small theme to look at. So I try to develop based on the individual um, body. Yeah. So what's a small? And, what's a top? What's a topic? For for example, today or yesterday, what is a topic you look at? Um, for example. Um, I, I look at a different system of the body. Like for example, the, uh, the skeletal, um, from the skeletal perspective or through the fluidity of the body or through the organ, the gland, uh, the more inner side or, um, or some, the articulate, some very small, a uh, subtle theme, or for example, very simple walking, standing. I just try to bring all the uh, concentration more uh, inward instead of outward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you rehearse in the living room or outside in the garden, or where do you do, do the movements? Um, most of the time, I use the living room. And not every day, but one week I will go out like two or three times. So I also do some outside do uh, outdoor improvisation. In a park close by or um, in a parking uh, lot? Or, or just in the yard uh, of my apartment. What, what are you I tell mm -hmm. you one very interesting thing, you know, that's happening in Hong Kong with the dancers, you know, uh, whether they are professional or amateur. Actually, you know, uh, nowadays, you know, everyone in Hong Kong has a mobile phone which can record. So you dance at home, okay? And you upload, you know, what a, a small fraction to someone who coordinates. This someone will will get, you know, the short dancing segments, you know, all together, and she will edit all together. And then, you know, she will put it on YouTube uh, for everyone. And th this are, these are not just professional dancers, you know, they can be just common people. So the invitation is to all, uh, actually, yeah. 
So they, yeah. they have been doing this, you know, several times already. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just and of saw... course that. Go ahead, so, please. Uh, I just saw a piece from Martha Graham uh, Dance Company, and this is actually from the video. It's like one dancer do a small piece of movement, and they try to make it together as the whole piece. So they try to do it in their living room or in a garden and in different backgrounds. So they, mm. but the movement, the sequences can be uh, smoothly uh, getting together. So I just saw it today. Yeah, but uh, uh, Shuyi as a question, what two months being in an apartment as an artist who is chose dancing for movement in space to be at home, what did it do to you? What does it do to your mind to your thinking how do you look at the world mm -hmm. i found a very interesting thing is before um, my perspective in terms of creation is more about the style or aesthetically preference if i want to start a piece but since the two months uh, in the apartment uh, my perspective my concentration, my focus change. I become not uh, pay much attention to aesthetic preference or the style or what kind of original contribution uh, for this particular style or is filled. Um, th this kind of thing before I think is very important, but for this two months, I felt it's not important. I become more come back to the simplicity, to the root or to the initiation of movement or of the, the body consciousness or just really go back to the root. Hmm. Uh, Mark, how long are you also in isolation or do you go out in Hong Kong? Well, <laughs> We have been doing uh, home office, you know. Uh, since how long? Since, since how February. many? Since February. Uh, February. Quite a long time, you know. And, and there's a lot of things, you know, that can be done at home, you know. <laughs> and, and the artists, you know, uh, they, they can read, they can watch, you know, things on, on, um, on TV and also your internet and so on. All of a sudden, actually, you know, people are telling you, Hey, uh, it's on the online, you know. Uh, 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 who's uh, Mahabharata by Peter Brook, uh, or uh, Einstein on the Bridge, you know, by Robert Wilson, or uh, all this gr uh, great ballet, you know, uh, done by Bauchi uh, Ballet Company, and and of course, you know, we now can of course go to your website. <laughs> Mm. And see a lot of things, you know, there, there are many things, you know, coming from different parts of the world, uh, from the U.S., you know, and also uh, from Hong Kong, actually, you know, there's uh, uh, so, much, so much things to, to be done, actually, in, at home. Um, uh, well, of course, you know, uh, one of the things uh, that everyone is thinking of is going digital, you see. Uh, what I do you think you, about it? What from normally the of, of, <clears throat> of, from the first to the third of <clears throat> May, we are supposed to be organizing, you know, the tenth anniversary of the Hong Kong International Deaf Film Festival. Well, of course, now it has been postponed. But meanwhile, you know, we have these seven rooms in a hotel booked for five days. Okay. And we could not get refund. So what we are going to do is that I have invited seven people, uh, people who do storytelling, people who do performance art, people who do theater, people who can compose song, people who make video, and so on. You know, seven of them, they will stay in the hotel, taking the place of the visitors. You know, they will stay in the hotel and they each, you know, will do a performance 15 minutes for four days. Mm -hmm. and, and this will be live streamed also, yeah? Uh, 
so this is kind of taking um, the inspiration from uh, Decameron. Decameron, okay, the Boccaccio yeah. tale, which was written in that's the plague right. yeah. times, yeah. Yeah, that's right, you know, um, instead of, you know, 10 people telling one story for 10 days, we have seven artists doing their own thing, 50 minutes mm. for four days. Okay. And then, you know, the other thing I'm thinking of actually, you know, in this, this uh, virus, this epidemic or pandemic, you know, make us think about, you know, that in future, you know, we, we should be focused on uh, digital creation. Uh, I, I, I am not, I'm talking about, you know, uh, in a communal way, all right, community. Uh, part of what I do is community art, you know. That means, you know, gathering people together, doing things, you know, but in this times, you know, how can you gather people together? except in the cyberspace, you know. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, we can uh, <clears throat> learn from, you know, the digital storying approach. We should be telling people or educating people how uh, to use your phone, you know, to make, to photograph or to, to make films and so on and how to transmit it through Zoom uh, mm. so that you are not alone. Mm. I mean, I hear uh, uh, stories of people who continue to do whatever online dating, they meet new people, but they don't meet them in person. They meet them on Skype, they won't see them. Um, have artists uh, uh, done that in Hong Kong or in yeah. Beijing? A question to all of you. Do artists who do not know each other have forged uh, new connections? Or do you think this is uh, reinforcing only, um, not only, but enforcing um, uh, networks that are already in place? That is a little bit hard to answer because you know uh, I don't <laughs> I don't know their lives, but I know there is one there is one show that mm -hmm. is still ongoing now. Perhaps the, the only one in mainland China, uh, which is a government-sponsored play. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is happening. This, oh, it is happening now. It is happening now. It is happening with buddies in Shanghai. on stage with buddies on stage or digital. Oh, actually, it's not. Uh, it's quite like what we are doing now here. You know, like mm -hmm. we're doing this, 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 this online rehearsing. You know, let's say I'm a, I'm an actor, so I'm going to perform in front of you, and you tell me where I do wrong, where I do right, and the others, you know, the same situation, and ah, uh, 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 they are rehearsing it in STA, you know, online. Mm -hmm. Shanghai Theater Academy in. Yeah, yeah, they're doing it now. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't tell know us about the play. There. Do you know what it is about? Well, it is about uh, the name. It's called as let, let me think the Diary of a Nurse. I think that's the that's the you know English name. So it's about a nurse who is in the in the in the in the uh, during the outbreak working in the hospital and what she saw, what she feel, and how things get worse and how things get better. Yeah, it's all all like a diary, you know. But it's a quick job, you know. The 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 writer wrote this whole thing in a very short period. And now they're rehearsing it. They're doing the, uh, they're doing the online rehearsing, but nobody knows what will come out. You know what the outcome will be, because and you they, can't you can't meet in person. But I, I, they, I'm I'm also not sure if they knew each other. I mean, this mm -hmm. group. I'm not yeah. sure about that. <laughs> sure. And does the government yeah. created this to create jobs for artists? Is you said it's government sponsored? There is from an yeah. arts fund in Shanghai, or the university pays for it. How does that work? Well, I think that the government pays for the for the for the for the whole process, but it's, but it's not like to 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 create more opportunity. But I mean, it's a it's a good example to test if we can do this, you know, long term online rehearsing, online dancing, online staging. But it's just a test, you know, that's a prototype. And uh, uh, the news about this show is now too many so i cannot find more information about it i'm not sure if things will work out or not mm -hmm. you know so there is there there is still chance that this thing will just you know break and nothing yeah, comes out. that's very interesting i mean uh, to our listeners uh, again we are on seagull talks uh, that at gmail.com if you want to send in questions but i think this uh, comment brings me to an important question um, um can we just go on and do theater like we we, we did or also, 
what would a theater look like for the healthcare workers who are under extreme stress right now? Should be something created for them? Uh, do we think of them as audience? Have also theater people, have we forgotten about them, the workers, you know, as much as most probably politics, current politics have left them behind, at least in America for a, a, a long time. And the healthcare system has been starved. So also what has theater and performance done in that old thing, that fresh an idea for the workers, for the people, um, do you do you feel um, there should be a new connection also to the people who are now really essential? We are not. We our uh, things are closed. Life goes on. Um, they are. So what's uh, w will that change? Should we create work? And if so, what would that look like? Uh, I think that you know, art workers, you know, uh, are quite vulnerable group in 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 society. Actually, you know. In Hong Kong, there are quite a few theater workers who are freelancers. Now, uh, you just now asked about government support. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, in Hong Kong, the government has lots of money. We have lots of reserve, uh, uh, being accumulated surpluses, you know, over the years. And also, you know, you might know that the Hong Kong dollars are backed by American dollars, that the banks, you know, issuing Hong Kong dollars. Uh, they actually have to have American dollars of equivalent amount. So through that exchange fund, you know, we also have a lot of American dollars. So there's not lack of money in Hong Kong. And of course, you know, it's, it's in a way, you know, doing its duty by offering relief to the art workers. Uh, you have to apply. If you are successful, you get seven thousand and five hundred dollars which is about one thousand american dollars as, as a kind of relief mm -hmm. for over the period uh, have you gotten that me yeah <laughs> no 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 i i have worked for free you know <laughs> all these years for some time now but anyway my organization as as a group uh we get three months uh, rent, not uh, having to pay, you know, uh, the, the art center. So this three months rent, you know, amounts to 120 Hong Kong, uh, 120,000 Hong Kong dollars. So it's $4,000 a month, actually. Uh, $40,000 a month, it's, it's five or 5,000 5, American dollars. So. That, that three months rent have been waived. And so mm -hmm. that's quite, and then also uh, as a group that employ, you know, uh, a lot of people, well, say when I say a lot, you know, we actually have about seven people who are paid. Uh, we, we also get uh, another uh, chunk of money, which amounts to 10,000 US. Mm -hmm. To um, yeah, Shu Yi, um, how is it for you? Is there support um, for, for your work, for your freelance dance work uh, before Corona and after Corona? Can you give us a little uh, insight how that works for you in Beijing? Yeah, um, yeah uh, as a freelancer uh, before and after, I think it's uh, quite similar because we, we survive um, for, we need multiple work to sustain. Uh, like for me, for example, uh, I do, I, I teach, I coach um, actors for uh, other co theater companies. I, uh, this is a sum of income for me. And I also um, do, I work as a performer. So I earn some money for, from performing for other people's piece. And in the end, I, create, uh, I, I do some choreography for my own. So this part is the most not-for-profit part, personally. So I have to use other sources of money to support uh, this part of me as an uh, independent uh, artist. I think mm -hmm. many uh, independent artists uh, have the similar situation like me. Sometimes, uh, luckily, we, we can have some fund uh, for some specific project. 
for example, some theater festival, um, uh, but it's limited. So I think basically multiple sources, um, yeah, some, some, we can get some of the funding and a little bit from teaching, a little bit from other uh, work. So, yeah, I think it's... Yeah. I'm sure you are in contact, you know, with your fellow artists, um, whether they are the directors or choreographers and dancers, actors. What is the mood in Beijing? What do people talk about? How do they see the situation? Will that, are they hopeful that it will change fast? Will it be um, 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 a, a real uh, uh, interruption uh, and not just a temporary pause? What, what is the mood and the feeling between artists? Well, um, for me, because I, I don't really talk with too many people. Um, but firstly, for me personally, I felt uh, one month ago, I had, the, I had a feeling or expectations like um, March or April, everything will go back to the normal. But things getting changed gradually. And so far, I, I don't have the expectation like I felt it's gonna be really long term, long a long journey. So it's not like sort of go back, but it's really like it's a kind of unknown future. It's it's not about go back for me now. So um, for me, I really spend a lot of time in terms of observing uh, instead of doing or try to figure out the solution. And I really want to find out the, what is the necessity to making art um, for me now becomes very important. Instead of, I want to do this, I want to do that, a new project. But now I trying to figure out the necessity what did you find so far? What is, what is the necessity? What do you think it is? Mm, so far, first is what I mentioned before. I, I really felt I don't have the strong impulse as before to think about the aesthetically preference, um, the interesting, uh, not very as strong as before in that level. So now, um, I felt I would like to figure out what, what is the nature or, or, or what is the real resonance between different community. What is the, uh, the real connection or the common resonance, some simplicity, um, not very fancy things. Um, or not even artistic like, but something, um, something simple, but really hardcore, I felt. And for some of my uh, friends I talked with, um, some of them, they've changed their original schedule. For example, they want to do they have a theme, they want to, they have a plan for this year, but since the situation like that, they don't have the mood to continue the same topic. So they would rather to uh, talk with people, talk with uh, people from different discipline and try to understand uh, what's their situation. Uh, was their attitude they found is more important than to uh, insist their artistic work. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm also open now for the situation instead of to trying to figure out what I'm going to do, I would like to more listen and to hear what's happening not on, uh, both outside and inside of myself. Mm -hmm. That's an important, uh, important uh, in a way discovery and to really go through for two months and to stay, to listen and to observe 
and to connect to the inside instead of that onslaught normally what comes from the outside of news and work and mails and so but do you feel you will be fundamentally changed as an artist when you come out of this um in the very early stage i don't feel it but uh, more and uh, gradually i felt it might ch fundamentally change Mm -hmm. Yes, is... what I said, the, the, the necessity, I really think about it, what, what it is that I don't really have an answer for now, but really the necessity become a, a question for myself. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Han Chen, um, you have been to New York, also in London. Um, what is your evaluation of the contemporary theater scene, also the free scene, experimental scene or in China? Um, <clears throat> is this a something that pause now will also help to reflect, uh, to think, do you think it was good before or what, what, could, be, what could be different or what could be um, also come out of this crisis that perhaps um, might uh, uh, change um, as uh, Shu Yi said, you know, that she will be changed. Will the theater be changed in Beijing after Corona? Will it be like it was before? Well, actually uh, theater will be Theater is forgotten now, <laughs> you know, in Beijing. So theater will be missed in the in the in the near future. So uh, uh, from my perspective, I don't think it will uh, fundamentally change. It will. But I think something. Well, will not. I don't think it will be. I don't think it will mm -hmm. be fundamentally changed. But I think some small changes will happen. You know, like this this this, this online programs, you know, online performances. Uh, I did a the, the the I did a show. Like six years ago in, in 2014, that, that that is the first O2O theater play in China. Um, back then it was not that successful, but now take a look at TikTok. You know that, that's maybe O2O. You mature. mean online to online? Uh, online to offline? Yeah, online. You know, uh, yeah. yeah, but you know TikTok may be a more mature type of this uh, this kind of play. Uh, but no, when speaking of theater, theater is keep changes. It's theater never stops changing <laughs> since Aristotle. So, uh, yeah, but theater is, is still theater. I mean, when the when the when the virus just uh, gone, I'm sure it will be gone. Uh, theater will reopen, and the people will miss it. People will uh, flash back into the theater uh, for a certain period. And that's for sure. And uh, for your early question, I I I. I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, the, the mood around artists are quite complicated, you know. Uh, some yeah, of them are quite it. upset. Yeah, some of they them upset? are quite upset about it. Yeah, I mean, actually a lot of them are quite upset about, about the situation, you know. They are losing money, they are losing jobs. So uh, um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, they join the online fight. You know, they try to uh, uh, figure things out by uh, discussing with people. And uh, another group, they're more peaceful in mind. You know, uh, maybe like Shui, you know, because they know this is another real fight that we're talking about here. The mm -hmm. real fight is, is out there in the hospital, undertaking by doctors, by patients. You know, I heard there, uh, there, is a, there is a nurse in Spain or Italy, I don't recall, who was just uh, committed suicide you know, due to the, the, the pressure. So, if you ask them, they will certainly give you a different answer. So this is another real fight. What we are reacting now is uh, some social and cultural problems caused by the virus, like frustration, uh, discrimination, ignorance, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll, uh, we'll need to find a way to deal with it, uh, to deal with those problems with art, with theater. Uh, I am currently working with some uh, friends who are not so upset, who are quite positive about the situation, and we're trying to uh, create an online program. Uh, maybe next month, something one month later or, or so, we're trying to uh, discuss. There's also an online discuss like this. We're trying to discuss how do we uh, defend ourselves with theater in the uh, play. And that mm -hmm. is uh one of you know positive ways to deal with the the, the situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we talked about it yesterday that perhaps uh, as a result of this crisis that theaters or european big theaters with ballet opera and 
the drama, that there might be a new division of digital theater or digital drama that will be as a given, you know, as there will be playwriting and there will be ballet and there will be perhaps uh, um, as, an, um, <clears throat> as a, a box of its own and that often crosses over, but it will be perhaps become a mainstream what now is performed and done by, by experimental artists that one day it will be uh, yeah, that um, makes normal to, 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 um, to have that. What is the role at the moment? What do you think, what, what does the Chinese the theater maker, perhaps also experimental money, where do they fit in in society to you at the moment? Is that uh, and also before, yeah. <clears throat> what, is the, what is the role that art, art plays in contemporary Chinese society? Well, experimental theater in China has always been uh, like 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 the new leader of this army. You know, they're trying to expand the, the, the definition of theater through the uh, experimentations of its form. You know, uh, and I have a friend who's really um, like into this cyberspace. You know, cyber uh, show. Uh, he's doing a lot of you know uh, online shows. Maybe maybe. Uh, I remember Peter Brook said, you know, in the in the space, there are two people. One is watching, and uh, uh, another one is walking through, and that's a theater. But he is definitely talking about a real space where we can breathe, where we can stretch our legs. But even cyberspace, a real space now, you know, mm -hmm. we are actually yeah. living in uh, in a in a cyber world. So, but I don't think it will be a mainstream because you know, uh, take a look at China. We we sort of defend this, 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 this virus in a very short period, you know, in only two months. And now uh, we barely have any domestic new confirmed cases in, in mainland now. So I think the, the, the tradition is, is still a, a strong stream now. The mainstream will now change in the, in the, in the, in the near future. And the, the, uh, for the, for the avant-garde artists, they're quite in a dilemma because, you know, if you, don't act if you don't perform yourself. You will be forgotten quickly because you are. I think are, you are not me. I think Sorry? there are many different kinds of art workers or theater workers. You know, uh, there are people, you know, who who look at you know art for art's sake, you know, and then you know there are people who really who want to use theater to change the world. I mean, yeah, I talked sure. about this group of young people they actually uh, were to tour this piece the spice road they're not just talking about history but they're talking about the contemporary world what's wrong with it uh, they talk about refugees they talk about you know democracy revolutions in egypt and elsewhere uh mm. so like for example i i have a, a group of performance art friends people who do performance art, you know, and just uh, on the tw 22nd of March, you know, at the Equinox, Spring Equinox, you know, they went out to do performances in the streets. And this is supposed to be a day of international solidarity when performance artists, you know, will actually do art, art, art uh, pieces, that mm -hmm. supports freedom and democracy. And that's, that's the, uh, the commitment they have as performance artists in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you are. Uh, just now you talk about workers, yeah? Workers, of course, you know, uh, they, 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 they can be workers in the, in, the, uh, in the Western society, the workers in Hong Kong. And there are different levels of workers, you know, some well paid, some actually are facing the loss of their jobs. Like, for example, a lot of restaurants are closing down and these people are out of work. And then, of course, you know, we have the homeless who are very vulnerable at this time. And this several hundred of them actually has been staying at night at the 24 hours McDonald. Okay restaurants but now the mcdonald restaurants have been closed mm. uh, after six or eight or something all right where do mm. these people go and the government has decided that nothing should be done or can be done 
Mm. So there, there are others, other people, elderly, uh, people who live under very crowded condition. They don't have even the money to buy masks. They don't have the money, you know, to buy things that wash that you're supposed to wash your hands. Right, and they right. don't have money to buy. <clears throat> so talking about digital <laughs> cinema or digital uh, theater, you know, it's, it's really something beyond them. Beyond them, but still, maybe we all uh, think about when, it. When we look at India and other parts <clears throat> of the poorer <throat> world, where, where are we? Mm. Mark, what, do you have a hope? Do you have a hope for theater in Hong Kong that something comes out of this that might, might be good instead of just all that yeah, all, disaster think, you know, we experience? Uh, I think, you know, a lot of artists, theater workers, you know, they're under the present circumstances. They are undergoing some kind of reflection about their own lives, about the role of art in society, about what kind of art to be done in future. Um, I must say that, you know, that the stage is not just, you know, inside a black box, Uh, or uh, uh, proscenium theater, the stage, you know, as, as Han Chang said earlier, you know, he wakes up every morning, he sees theater all around. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. in Hong Kong, are we not aware that, you know, that well before the con coronavirus, since June, the young people and the people of Hong Kong had made themselves on the world stage, okay? And this world stage, you know, they say, you know, we want democracy, we want freedom. And now they say we want transparency uh, and so on, okay? So even just today, there are young people who went out just now Okay, uh, in a kind of uh, 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 commemoration, you know, they brought flowers to a MTR station, a metro station, you know, where seven months ago, you know, the policemen of Hong Kong brutally and this in this indiscriminately, you know, beat up people inside the trains. Yeah, I mean. After this uh, epidemic or pandemic is over, you know, Hong Kong people, it still has this stage to, to go back. Yeah. Mm. Um, I just want to say we got an email from uh, Janice Poon who, who commented on the Hong Kong situation and said the companies who tried to continue their rehearsals all wear masks during rehearsals, limited the number of actors in the rehearsal room. One theater company named... Um, Onandon Theater Workshop is broadcasting a radio play this week and target to conclude the performance with a live performance in June. So what they show now digital will then be shown um, live, but most of the rehearsal activities um, have stopped. Um, I do remember one scene in a great video about an architect who, uh, studio who said, instead of building the library, they were supposed to build a library in a the community. They said very early on digitally, they, they shared the ground plans, the different plans they decided to do, the one they decided on, then the material, and then um, how it's going to look like. They shared the digital models, how it was constructed. And then when people in the community came to see the library, they knew the library. They were part of it in a way. So perhaps, you know, that idea um, also that Hong Kong does to rehearse, to prepare, to share it. And then at one day, everybody had come in might also be something that can be done or perhaps might also change a way of uh, making theater, normally the rehearsal process, the process itself is hidden. We think it's so important. Many theater artists actually say, it's mm. just a process that has to stop to finally open something they would like to go over. But um, I think there are uh, many, many things to um, explore. For you guys, um, um, to the New York community or uh, US community or European community, what would be important for theater makers in China now? Was there something you, would like to hear, would like to have get help, uh, what is uh, of interest and uh, what could, could be done and, uh, and something you would ask 
the global theater community who is listening? Surely, yeah. The, the Hong Kong people, you know, they, they have been making contacts all over the world, you know, and uh, in some places they are more successful than the others, you know. And they even got, you know, <laughs> Donald Trump to, uh, to finally sign, you know, that, uh, that uh, legislation about human rights in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, do people rehearse with masks? I think so. Uh, they, they wear masks at workshops as well. Okay. Uh, well, the, the workshops, you know, where you actually uh, do things face to face, it only recently stopped. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we wear masks and from the very early on, you know, we learned from what happened 17 years ago when SARS happened. And our medical doctors told us that we should wear masks. Yeah. We were really surprised that the Western people, you know, they, they didn't wear at all, you know. And, and then some people uh, say that, you know, you only have to drink water and, uh, and do sauna, actually, you know, and then you will be rid of coronavirus. Yeah. So, so that's good advice, yeah, maybe to all, all, the, all the listeners or the artists do wear masks uh, when you go out. There's a lot of research that suggests it might help not to spread, but also not, not to get. Before we close down, we are close to the end. Uh, maybe we can donate, if anybody wants to donate something to Mark's organization in Hong Kong. Um, we will have the... Um, uh, 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 information on our website and on the whole rounds. Thank you for joining us. But maybe in the last minutes, tell all oh, what are you working on? How do you keep your mind busy? What are you reading, listening? And also, is there a project um, what you are pursuing anyway, what you work on right now? Um, Shu Yi, maybe we can start with you. Uh, you mean what I'm reading, for example? Uh, yeah, what are you reading? What are you listening to? And what project are you working on? besides observation, is there a concrete project you are working on? Well, uh, basic, basically I'm concentrated on the uh, body consciousness. So from different perspectives. So every day, um, actually I, ha I have a schedule is like some, a, some books related to the fundamental foundation of the uh, physical body and some of the body mind centering based uh, practice and some of the body consciousness philosophy. So I have uh, different layers and perspectives to look at, to concentrate, mm -hmm. to relate really, to the body. And so I divided a day into different sections to, to look at them. Mm -hmm. So you do the movements, but you also read. Thank you. Uh, Mark, is there, what's your project you are really working on at the moment? And what do you read and what are you listening to? Oh, uh, today I listened to a song, you know, sent through the internet. To me, it's, 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 uh, it's an Italian song. It, it's called, uh, uh, what is it called? Anyway, it's devoted to Bagamo. Uh, where uh, a lot of people die yeah, from die. the uh, mm -hmm. epidemic, you know, that this is still sort of a very uh, beautiful song that I Thanks. like, actually, but I, it's in Italian. Uh, it, it's called I, I, I Am Reborn, You Are Reborn, you know, one mm -hmm. of the 70s songs, actually. <laughs> right. And, and then oh, what, okay, you know, I read, actually, is um, something called the... Um, uh, the donut economics. I think, you know, we really have to think hard about, you know, how capitalism goes or how our economy ought to go. And mm -hmm. I think rainbow economics, you know, provides a good, good answer, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the project I'm working on, actually, you know, the different projects, you know, which are installed, uh, that are stalled, actually, you know, we have this play called uh, it won't be known now. It's about, you know, Japanese uh, prisoner of war camp, actually, inside and outside. If we're to take it to South Korea, the Edinburgh Festival, and so on. And, and, and I just wonder if it would happen. 
And then we have this play called, you know, the, um, the, the, the White Shadow. It's about, about a ghost, you know, in this area called Sam Shui Po, where I live. And uh, it's through the ghost, you know, she sees uh, past persons and, uh, and the reason, you know, the fighters of, of uh, uh, democracy and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, shown one way or the other. But then, you know, uh, in this area, there is a temple nearby, not very really far from where I live, you know, it's called Temple of the Third Prince. The third prince, you know, happened to be uh, a deity. And he was invited to Hong Kong uh, from somewhere in China. And he was becoming the resident god, you know, in this temple. The reason why he was invited to come to Hong Kong was because, you know, there was a plague. Okay, <laughs> there was mm -hmm. a plague at the end of uh, the 19th, uh, 19th century, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. I want to do a play about that. Do a play yeah. about that, that's great. Han Chen, what's on your mind? Oh, actually, in order to prepare for the, for the online project, I'm currently rereading Albert Camus and uh, Artolf. Now it seems okay. like only in the in the time of plague can you understand the Artolf's theory. Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think theory. Judith Miller from uh, NYU, she once wrote over in an exchange, she said, we all live now in Artodian times, but we have to actually, stay yeah. on the right side of madness and not go to the wrong side of madness. So thank you um, all again uh, uh, for coming. Uh, joining us here. This is important that we hear from Hong Kong and China. Uh, we are connected all together. We share the suffering and, uh, um, and, uh, and also the joy, I think, of being alive. And um, this is an important um, conversation. Tomorrow, please do tune in. Uh, the great Thomas Ostermeyer from Schaubühne Berlin will be with us. Oh, and we have Teatro delle Albe uh, from Italy. They are based in Ravenna, Ermana and Marco will talk about life in Italy and what it means to do. They did mm. a big Dante project just now, uh, 700 years after it was written. And then we have the great uh, Toshiki Okada from Japan who moved his family out of Tokyo after the Fukushima event and very much uh, the environment and uh, is on his thinking. So I can't wait to hear what, what is on his mind. So again, thank you for uh, participating and sharing your experience. And I hope to see you all in New York one day under uh, in live. Uh, so again, mm. thank you so much. And thanks to HowlRound thank you. for um, hosting us at Emerson College and uh, our supporters at the Siegel Center and uh, to your listeners. I know there's lots to do even so we are in our homes. Some have even more to do than before they feel. So thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.